Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Let's do some singing. And cry. 
Good morning, mic check. About loud enough and no ears are bleeding, yay, go team. <laughs> Let's go ahead and offer up a word of prayer over the offering this morning. Father God, we just thank you that we can come before you today and bring forward this offering and every offering out of our lives this week, every offering of love to others, Father. We ask that you would take them and bless them and multiply them around our community and around our world with the message of salvation through faith in your risen son, Jesus of Nazareth. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, do we have any big announcements? 
besides that epic one I'm pretty sure everybody's kind of aware of for the most part. School's out. Summer's starting. <laughs> Yay, go team. So, any other... Yes? Yes? Sam did great with the Bennett County track team in Wall, so good job for our track kids, and they did very well. Good job, leaders. <laughs> yep, and had a successful good rodeo yesterday. Beautiful weather for rodeo yesterday. Let's go ahead and open up the message with a word of prayer this morning. Father God, we just thank you that we can gather together and dig into your word, Father, and meditate on your word and what it can speak to our hearts. And Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would speak your gospel to our open ears and hearts this morning through my lips so that we can each grow closer to you in our relationship with you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So yeah, morning all. Cheers. It's a very beautiful, good week. Good start to the week here. Start to the week, end of the week, however your days lay out on that. But uh, yeah, and I hope that you're all doing very well. We've been super blessed this morning. Because guess what? It is not an ever blustery, flustery day outside. Praise God. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well through this blustery, flustery spring, it seems like. Can't remember a spring for a while, quite a while where I felt like I wanted to walk around with tied hard and fast to a little heavy anchor and just have that anchor with me so I didn't feel like I was going to blow to <laughs> Texas or to Canada, one of the two. But uh, either way, we can have appreciation for all the joyful moments, the good joyful moments like yesterday, beautiful day for a high school rodeo, and the joyful moments of a good weekend for, good track weekend for our local kids. And it's encouraging to be able to look around life and enjoy the joyful times each and every joyful moment that our Heavenly Father blesses us with, you know? When I'll slow down and humble myself and just slow down and say, okay, I don't have to be King Dan Almighty in charge of everything, and I can just slow down and let God be God, it's sure a lot more enjoyable, personally. <laughs> you just... and so, uh, so how can this be done? How can I slow down and let God be God? I can remember Isaiah 64, verse 4, and the promise that it holds. For from days of old, no one has heard, nor has ear perceived, nor has the eye seen a God besides you, who works on behalf of the one who gladly waits for him. Whew. Now there's kind of a tall order that just jumped out at me right there in that last sentence. Who works and acts on behalf of the one who gladly waits for him. Am I gladly waiting for God right now with the prayers that I've given up to him and the requests I've put before him as his child? I'm more of a, you know, so much of the instant gratification society that we live in now makes that waiting and waiting gladly a lot taller order. I appreciate how the amplified version puts the gladly in there for him. But, uh, when we have open eyes and hearts for God's voice to, of love to each of us and the revelation of some of the least of the blessings that he bestows on us, it's a whole lot easier to join in, join in with the First Chronicles 16, verse 34. To give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. How long does God love you? How long does God love you? How long will God love me? Forever. No end. His love will never end. So, what's my key part of that relationship? Uh, thank you. <laughs> I can have a heart full of gratitude. And is it always easy to have a heart full of gratitude? No, I have to confess personally, it's not the easiest thing in the world to say, you know, yay, joyful, joyful. But I'm encouraged to be thankful. And thankful to God in all situations. That verse that we read in God's good word, 
Be thankful in all situations, in all circumstances. For a while it was, the in got transferred to a for in my mind. But I don't have to be thankful for everything that comes into my life. There's a lot of things that come into our lives that we probably don't want to or don't need to be thankful for. But even when the horse steps on my toe, or, you know, the boat gets a, the tire gets a flat, the boat gets a hole, whatever the scenario might be for us, I can be thankful to God in and through all that situation and see the blessing that he's going to bestow on myself, my loved ones, and all those involved with how to get through that situation. Because when we get through a trying, stressful time, and God helps and guides us and we're thankful through that time frame, guess what we have at the end of it? We have a giant exclamation point testimony. Because personally, and you can all interpret this for yourselves how you see it, but personally, I love it when someone will share their testimony with me about how God has really pow and wowed for them. For the rest of the world, it might not be that big of a power or a wow. It's like, oh, okay, cool, good deal for you. But for that person, for me, in that moment of time, for any one of us, in that moment of time when God says, here, I love you, daughter, I love you, son, it's a kapow wow moment that we want to give him thanks and praise for. And I know personally as a dad, with my relationships with my kids, I greatly appreciate it when they have that, that thank you smile, the thank you eyes. You know, it's like, because in all honesty, parents and anyone who's not a parent yet, someday you might get to, is it a whole lot easier to appreciate kids when, yep, cool, thanks, appreciate it, you know? Or is it like, whoa, thanks dad, this is awesome. I appreciate you helping me out like this. You know, so often, even for big things, it's like, eh, okay, cool, thanks. But for the littlest tiny thing, you know, oh, yay, thanks for getting us. A, and this is not, not something that's happened, but just an, an analogy that's popping into my head right now. Oh, yay, thanks for the boat that we can go do stuff with, Dad. Fun, fun. Versus the, whoa, cool, thanks for taking that fish out of that crappie's mouth so I didn't have to get my hands on it, you know. That excitement level of the thank, thankfulness and gratitude. And gratitude is such a key in a relationship, I think. And it's a... Gratitude is a great sacrifice. Because it's a sacrifice of self for others. I'm using my time to be thankful to someone. And when I'm thankful to my Heavenly Father, I'm using my time and giving my time to Him. And loving the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I'm pretty sure if we look back through all of our good reading here, that's the first and greatest one that we need to focus on. And then to love my neighbor as myself. So I can apply that thankfulness to my neighbor. Another, not always the easiest thing in the world sometimes, but it's definitely something that can provide the hand of blessing and peace and serenity for us. In Psalms 50 verse 23, we are encouraged. But giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. For if you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. The more thankful I am, the more aware I can be of God's salvation for my life. And not just the eternal salvation of my spirit forever and ever, but the, guess what? I was able to get up and walk and my foot didn't hurt quite as bad this morning or my neck didn't go snap, crackle, pop when I <laughs> rocked it there. Whatever the little details might be for each one of us, your little details and your little details and my little details, they're probably all going to be a little different. And that's okay. We can all be thankful and give thanks and praise with each other for each other's little blessings. And it's truly honoring, I think, to our Heavenly Father to show Him appreciation. And the testimonies that we share about the blessings that He's bestowed upon each one of us is a way to give him thanks and praise for it because I'm letting his goodness be known to somebody else. When you let me know how good God has been to you, it helps me open my mind and my ears and my eyes to my life around me and realize, oh, God's been good to me in this way and this way that I hadn't even been realizing yet. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. Thanks for letting me know how good God's been to you lately. Oh, and BTW, here's my list. Check, check, check. <laughs> And in all the ways each day of life, I can look to and ask,
God's Holy Spirit for his wisdom and his guidance. If we look back to John 14, verse 26, Jesus tells us, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Now that's true memory right there. The Holy Spirit can bring forward and bring to memory everything that God has told me. What has God told me out of here? A key thing to be brought back to memory. But how many things has God told you in that moment of working, doing something, an activity, an action, in the artistic beauty of a sunset, a sunrise, a, a moment? All those different messages that God has given you about his love for you and his caring for you. And that's true good memory. And the Holy Spirit is always with each of us through our faith in Jesus. When we, call, when we call on Jesus to be our Lord and Savior and seek to apply our lives as, with him as our Lord and Savior, God's Holy Spirit lives in us. And 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16 reminds us, Do you not know that you are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Where am I going to take God's Spirit with me today? How am I going to treat this life that I'm living with God's Holy Spirit coming with me everywhere? That's a pretty powerful reminder for me to remember to take charge of what's going on up here. If I take charge of what's going on up here, what comes out of here, and what comes out of my actions is going to be in line with his truth for me, I trust. But I've got to control what I'm thinking on, what I'm meditating on. What's, what's the truth of God's love for me in this moment, in this time no one of us now? And thinking of thankfulness and gratitude. There's one fairly large group of people, I believe, in our midst, some of them in our midst right now even, that uh, can be very appreciative and grateful with much gratitude. Guess what? It's graduation season! All the graduates, that phase of life is check, done, yay, time in the big arena. Graduation has occurred. And uh, at one of the graduations I was at recently, it was so neat, and I'm reminded on Sunday mornings too, seeing ch kids, childs, young children's eyes, and the innocence in their eyes, that excited for life innocence. That is so cool and so powerful. And uh, the, the memories that they're able to create and the memories that they're seeking. You know, young kids' eyes and their actions they're seeking and they're learning and wanting to, wanting to know and live life. How am I emulating that with my own life? Have I fallen into the, oh, I'm just going to be an old pro at this thing called life? Or do I still have that excitement of, I'm ready to live life. Let's go see what I can see. How, what is this thing that I can play with and what is it? Think in my imagination, come up with this neat new deal. And uh, I can remember, just like for the kids, all their experiences are something to be learned from. Their experiences don't have to be something that they dwell on and that rules and is distracted to their life and their walk with God, but it's an experience to learn from and to grow from. And I can remember that. Uh, Everything I do, the words that I say, the life that I live, some little life is possibly probably seeing that or going to hear a story about it someday. And I can make a difference in at least one life. If the way that I live my life and the words that I use and the love that I show with my life can make a difference in one more life, a positive, uplifting difference, guess what? A difference has been made. Every positive difference you imply and help bring forward to each and every person that you interact with, guess what? A difference has been made. Will evil continue around the world? Tragically, yes. Sin will continue around the world? Tragically, yes. But the positive difference that you make and that you make and that I can make in the lives of those around us, a difference has been made. And, uh, in the devo daily devotional, My Utmost for His Highest, by Oswald Chambers, this last week, says, 
It is one of the most difficult yet critical disciplines of the Christian life to allow the Holy Spirit to bring us into absolute harmony with the teaching of Jesus in these verses. Is what our Lord and Savior teaches us easy? No, not all the time. But God's Holy Spirit can lead and guide us and remind us of what God has told us and provided in his word for us. In uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 19, Jesus encourages us, by your patient endurance, empowered by the Holy Spirit, you will gain your souls. Now there is a promise. And there's a promise that the world's trying to sell us on a daily basis, aren't they? I could flip through any channel, I'm pretty sure, on television, or listening on the radio, or any social media thing online, and the world is going to be advertising me that I can have, I can gain my soul, you can be true to yourself, and all the different things that the advertisements are out there for. When all I've got to do, empowered by the Holy Spirit, seek God and follow His guidance, and I can trust He will guide me through life. I know if I choose to just take off headstrong on my own, I know the way. What happens when I run into a dark place and I don't have any more light? Having guided in places for hunters and such, when you don't have any light, even if you know the trails and you know the setup and you've been through it 50 to 100 times, zero light still makes you pucker up with a little bit of nervous, a little bit of that tragic little F word fear in your heart, or it sure can. And so, taking time to just slow down and meditate and think on what is God's Holy Spirit leading me to think about and to, to do today? What are the words I can, you know, when I get to interact with, I was blessed with the opportunity, a little bit of a bunny trail around the tree here quick, but yesterday I was blessed with the opportunity to meet someone new while I was out checking cows and uh, in chatting with this gentleman and his wife and just talking along and I just, I don't know why, but I just felt led by the Holy Spirit in my words and conversation to just talking about my faith and letting her know, yeah, I'm, and when I got born again, when I became a Christian and how Jesus was my Lord and Savior, and she said, partway through the conversation, she kind of did a double take a little bit. Do, do you do this all the time with everybody? I'm like, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> kind of a little dumbfounded, what, what do you mean about that? Well, I mean, we, we haven't even been talking five minutes and you're telling me how Jesus is your Lord and Savior? And I said, well, I feel comfortable talking with somebody and feel led by the Holy Spirit to do so. I'm going to share my faith with each and every person. Because that's the good news that I've known, that I've found. What's the good news that you've known and you've found? That's the gospel that we can each share with the world around us that desperately wants to have, be able to gain their souls, to be able to gain their mind, their will, and their emotions. We have the opportunity and the option to have God's peace that passes all understanding in our mind, our will, and our emotions through the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, to strengthen for patient endurance, you know, by your patient endurance. There's another fun one that Amplified Version adds in there. Patient. Endurance is one thing, but to be patient through it, eesh. That can be a tough one for some of us. <laughs> but not naming names or pointing fingers. <laughs> but uh, Charles Spurgeon, in one of his sermons, mentioned to watch under prayer. And to me, watch under prayer, to stay guarded, and to be prepared for any attack that the enemy might try to throw at my body, for any attack that the enemy might try to throw at my soul, my mind, my will, or my emotions, or a spiritual attack from the enemy. Well, Jesus has got my spirit covered totally, completely. It's up to me to remember to give him my soul my mind, my will, and my emotions, and when something emotionally disturbing comes into life, because yeah, that happens for some of us. I won't ask for a raising of hands and <laughs> any of such things there, but I have the option to choose to panic about it, to splash it all over social media and every place that, you gotta hear what happened to me, <laughs> you know? Or I have the option to, God, I'm gonna give this to you, I'm gonna let go of it, put it in your hands, put it at your feet, here you go, Father. As your son, as your daughter, I trust you. 
Here's the situation. Help. <laughs> Powerful little one word for us there that we can remember for our Heavenly Father. Help. <laughs> and staying in tune with my part of my relationship with God. The relationship that I have and the relationship that I claim to have. Do I stay in tune and spend the time with Him? And, you know, in all, every other relationship in your life, do you spend time talking, communicating, trying to do the best for the other part of the relationship? Am I doing my part with my relationship of, with God for that? And following the Holy Spirit's guiding helps provide the peace for my soul with that promise that we brought up, the peace that passes all understanding. Now, you know, I can imagine, I've got a pretty good imagination, I think. I'm pretty sure all of you in here have fairly good enthusiastic imaginations. What's the maximum peace that you can imagine? What would the greatest peace that you could possibly come up with be like? The peace that you were promised passes all that. We can't even imagine the goodness that our Heavenly Father has in store for us. No matter how creative our imaginations get. And that's kind of cool because that enables uh, Colossians 3 verse 15. Which tells us, And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. And always be thankful. Gratitude and peace. It's amazing how they're kind of tied together. It's, it's almost like they have one of these on together. They're married together. Peace is married to thankfulness and gratitude. And with gratitude, you get peace. They flow together in the same direction down the same river. One factor for the importance of gratitude and thankfulness is that it provides each one who realizes it that testimony. And what do our testimonies do? When you share how good the gospel that God has shown you, the good news that he's given and blessed you with, what does that do? It glorifies God. It lifts him up and lets the world around us know this is who we know the creator to be as our heavenly father. Here's the good news he shared with me. And as we do that, it will help them be able to open their hearts and their minds and their lives, hopefully, to realize the goodness and the love of God in their life. That's pretty powerful. Stay here until you receive the Holy Spirit. And then go forward and preach the gospel to Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Well, guess what? Where's over here at the ends of the earth? <laughs> so let's just be preaching that gospel and the good news of God's love in our lives with the way that we live and live out our lives. We have that opportunity. One other factor for the importance of gratitude and thankfulness. Oh, yeah, the tes testifier. Got to keep up with my talking where the notes are at. Sometimes the tree, running the rabbit and following the squirrel around the tree, we get confused with which tail we're following there. But uh, the more we can help others to know him and to know him thankfully and just appreciate him. You know, I can honestly say to you all and any other human being, I appreciate Yahweh, God, my heavenly father. I've got a lot of big reasons that we could look back on in the past, you know, decade and a half. But I've also got a lot of little reasons in the last 24 hours. And we can share our big reasons and our little reasons for why God is so great and so good. And build each other up and then strengthen each other with our testimonies so that as we go out and share our testimonies with the world, they come to know God. And who is this Jesus? Why, why, why do you care about Jesus? Because he cares and loves about me. And here's how and why. In Isaiah 63 verse 7. I will tell of the loving kindnesses of the Lord and the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. According to all that the Lord has done for us and his great goodness towards the house of Israel, which he has shown them according to his compassion and according to the abundance of his loving kindnesses. And through our faith in Jesus, we're part of that house. So as God's children and part of his house of Israel, do we have any prayers that we'd like to lift up to our Heavenly Father this morning and anything we'd like to keep?
Yes, sir. We'll lift up our, our brother, Dave Vinson, David Vinson, with his health situation. And that God's hand of guidance and love and wisdom can be there for him and for all of his medical team that's going to help him deal with their situation. And by his stripes, he is healed, just like each and every one of us in this room are. Emma Jacobs family. Yes, keep Emma, ja Emma Jacobs family lifted up. Grandma's back. Can, can we? Do you mind sharing Grandma's first name? Kim. Kim. Okay, we'll keep Kim's back lifted up. Thank you, sweetheart. Kim Wardell. Okay. Thank you. We will keep Grandma Kim's back lifted up for health and wellness and restoration. Um. He's one. Yes. And all of their illnesses, but particularly been hearing about the back pain. Yes. Everyone dealing with any back issues, we will keep all of you lifted up for sure. <laughs> for wisdom. Wisdom? Wisdom and guidance for a missionary group that I'm working with in Guatemala. Hmm. all the Arliss Moreland family lifted up as they travel home from their celebration of her life. Let's go ahead and lift all these prayers up to our Heavenly Father this morning. Father God, we just thank you that we can come before you as your children, and we just lift up these requests to you, and thank you for your answers, and for your, for your hand of love and your Holy Spirit being involved in guiding all the thoughts and wisdom for everyone. We would lift up uh, David Vinson and all of the medical professionals helping him with his situation for health restoration and renewal. We just ask for your hand of love to be, love and wisdom to be over each one of them as they help him deal with that situation that he has. And for health and wellness, we lift up Grandma Kim, as well as all of our church family who has back pain and is dealing with back issues that are not being solved as quickly as the medical professionals had hoped in their ways they hoped. So let, may they have medical teams that help each of them find your answer and your truth for good health and wellness and pain-free backs to enjoy life, the life that you've given them, Father. We would also like to ask for comfort and peace through their times of grief for the Emma Jacobs family and safe travels for them, as well as for the Arliss Moreland and the Decays for just comfort and peace for each of them and safe travels for all of them after they've joined together for the celebration of those women's lives. And Father, we ask for wisdom and guidance for uh, the missionary groups, missionary group in Guatemala, as well as just missionaries all over the world. Father, please have your hand of wisdom and guidance and peace surrounding each one of them that they can share your love in a world that desperately needs your love. And Father, we would lift, lift up Bob and Missy Barkley and ask for peace and provision for the mission work that they do in Paraguay. And we also thank you for the continued health and wellness and restoration for Michelle and for Summer and continued abundant provision for them and their families. We would like to ask for 
Your hand of love and guidance for all of our medical personnel, our military, and our first responders. Ask for safety and wisdom and guidance for each of them and for your peace that passes all understanding. We thank you, Father, for safety for teachers and the kids as they start their summer break, that they can have a safe, fun, successful summer, summer restoration and renewal and be able to apply the learning that they've been able to gain and enjoy having taught others to good learning. We lift up the nation of Israel, Father, and Israelites worldwide and ask for your hand of love and guidance and peace for each one of them. Thank you for the continued moisture, Father, and we just all of our thanks and praise and grat gratitude we lift up in Jesus' name through the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Grace and peace, friends. Enjoy the journey in the summer. <laughs>